Now let's join our commentator, Sam Menneker. Hi there, wrestling fans. Welcome again to All-Star Championship Wrestling featuring the world's greatest wrestlers. We have a tremendous card for you. We get on the way with our first event immediately following these messages. Okay, fans, we're ready to go with our first event. Already in the ring is the very popular Cowboy Bob Ellis, one of America's greatest wrestlers. We're waiting for his opponent. And from the booze, in the, wait a minute, here he comes, pretty boy Bobby Heenan. Pretty boy Bobby Heenan is entering the ring We've got to find out what this is all about. He's in clutch. He's, uh, his knee is taped up. And uh, he's... Uh, fans, here's pretty boy Bobby Heenan. Now, just a moment. Now, you, you, you signed to wrestle Cowboy Bob Ellis. And I saw you recently, and you were perfectly all right. No, let me explain what happened. Came down to watch the matches. Now, as I did that, I fell and hit my knee on the step. I've had it checked, and I just can't wrestle tonight. Now, I came out here for one purpose. That's to show the people and everybody that I have good intentions. That I wanted to beat this farmer, this hayseed hillbilly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the scheduled match is Pretty Boy Bobby Heenan against Cowboy Bob Ellis. I wanted to wrestle him. I'm perfectly capable of wrestling him right now, but they won't let me wrestle. As you see, I have a brace on my leg. As iron supports, I'm on a crutch. I don't know how long I'll be on the crutch, but I would like right now to have a postponement. Maybe in the next couple months, maybe five or six months, then my knee will be ready, just like Lance's will hurt, and I'll be able to wrestle. I should be able to wrestle. I, I just, He's mad enough to come up here and ask like a gentleman that he is. That's more than a lot of people have shown. I just ask a little consideration at all. Bob, I think he's trying to edge his way out of the match. I don't know, but I stood was all right just not too long ago. Yes, I, uh, you're right there. No, like I said, I fell on the steps. I hurt my leg. Would you check and see? If it would be okay if they could postpone this for a couple months, maybe five or six months. If you sign for this match and you got to go through it. No, no, wait, no, wait a minute about this. He's going to hurt me. I realize, I realize, I realize I signed for this. Fans, I, I, I don't know what to say. I realize that the referee is going to hurt. You can't send me in with a bad leg like that. You can't send me with a bad leg Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how, what, what the outcome of this will be. But... Bobby Heenan has entered the ring with a crutch. Claims that he cannot wrestle. Bob Ellis is ready. With Heenan are Lance and Mulligan. And there's a big argument going on in the ring. We saw Heenan not too long ago and he was all right, but you heard his explanation. are sanctioned by the State Athletic Commission, which has appointed as your referee, Henry Van Loon, the timekeeper, Harry Black. This match has a 15-minute time limit, one fall to a finish. Introducing at a weight of 252 pounds from San Angelo, Texas, the great cowboy, Bob Ellis. And his opponent for this match at 232 pounds from Beverly Hills, California, the one and only pretty boy, Bobby Heenan. Well, fans, I don't know how we can have this match because Heenan just claims he absolutely cannot wrestle. And uh, the referee doesn't believe him. Anyway, lands that mulligan. Oh, Bobby Heenan ran at Ellis. 
and attempted to hit him with the front. Ellis ducked, and now, oh, look at this cowboy Bob Ellis. Ellis is working over, lands on Mulligan. And Heenan is, oh, there it goes, the Bulldog headlock. He has laid out. Lads, and now he's working on Mulligan. Heenan is making himself scarce. He drops Mulligan. Hey, now he's chasing him. Now he's chasing Heenan. Lads and Mulligan are out cold as a result of the Bulldog headlock. And Heenan is taking off. The man's oh. chasing! Three! Three! The man is crazy! The man's insane! You think I'm getting away with him? The man's insane! The referee is counting Heenan. The man's a lunatic! Heenan is on the outside. You kill me! Ladies and gentlemen, the man's a lunatic! The match is over. You've been counted out. The winner is Bob Ellis. Count it out! Here he is, Cowboy Bob Ellis. Well, Bob, he tried to hit you with that crutch. Sure and boy, you really moved fast and got away. And fans here laying on the mat. They're on the mat right now. Lanza and Mulligan are still just about out as a result. I don't know what them studs got in for me. I didn't come up here to fight nobody like that. But they want to fight, I'll show enough to drive them. Well, you did a beautiful job. Lance and Mulligan are still on the mat. And Heenan, who of course didn't have anything wrong with his leg, is helping them out. I'd like to notice how he's getting around on that leg now. Yeah. Nothing wrong with him now. Well, Bob, you know you are considered to be one of America's greatest. And you certainly proved it today, the way you laid these fellows out. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Manica, I just like to fight good, clean wrestlers, and that's what I want. But if these studs want to play something rough, I'll show enough go with them. Well, they've got the rough men around here, and, uh, man, the way I, fans, I just can't get over the way Cowboy Bob Ellis went to work on Lanza and Mulligan, and he even made himself scarce, and he as you is. pointed out, he moved, well, but, he's getting around pretty good on that leg, I think I ought to go get him right now, boy, before he gets out well, of that Bob, you don't have to do it, you proved your point, ladies and gentlemen, this is the great Cowboy Bob Ellis. And I know there's a lot of rough guys around here that you can take care of. Well, I sure would like to try, Mr. Minker, and it's always nice talking to you. Thank yeah. you very much, fans. Cowboy Bob Ellis, what a great man. And there is... Well, What's he counting me out for? I've got that. a bad leg. You moved hey, let me tell you getting away. Let me tell you something. When a crazy man is chasing you, you can develop powers. You wouldn't normally have. Lady. The leg is sore. He tried to take advantage of me. The ref took advantage of me. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll mistake attention those two. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll be talking with some distinguished guests in just a moment. I would like to remind you again. Now we're getting a lot of mail for the wrestlers, and we certainly appreciate it. But to, to, uh, for the mail to reach the wrestlers more quickly, don't send them to the station. Send them to post office box. 22342, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46222. That's the number up there on your screen. Uh, this way, the wrestlers get the letters much quicker, and those that require answer will be answered. Now, fans, uh, we are ready to get underway with a, a very important interview, and here we have the world's tag team champions, the Legionnaires, Sergeant Jacques Goulet, and Private Don Fargo. Now, speaking of mail, we've been getting a lot of mail from the fans, gentlemen. Uh, wondering how both of you got together. Now, of course, uh, we know that uh, Sergeant Goulet is a native of Marseille, France. You are an American. I know that the Foreign Legion, the, called the Legion of Strangers, have many people from all parts of the world. Would you explain how you met? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you because I'm the sergeant. Well, I was in a Foreign Legion like you know and all the people know. Or if you don't know, I don't care. I've been there for five years. And I did my time, and here come Fargo. After, I don't know how easy he get there. I never ask him. It's not my business. You know one thing, Manneker, when we joined the Foreign Legion, nobody asked you any question. Is that why it's called the Legion of Strangers? Is that right? Yes, it is. 
And when you joint, you just sign a contract and the time is for five years. And that's how I met Fargo. We got friends together. I was his sergeant. I was his DI. And the man, how funny, was tough. And he had a lot of ability. I saw him. We had a lot of fight. And I decided, I said, listen, Fargo, after we finish here, we go back in the United States. We go back all over the world. I'm going to get the title. And that's what we are now. And ask him how I met him in there. Would you explain that, please, sir? Well, like he said, you know, he, he wrestled before he got in the Legion. I didn't know him then, but I've heard of him, and he heard of me, and I wrestled before I got in the Legion. But like I, how I got in the Legion, like I say, is our business. It's nobody else's business. And how I got out is nobody's business. It's our business. And I'm going to tell you this right now, and also like he says, we are called by a number in there, not a name. We have nothing but a number, and that's what we are in the Foreign Legion. And we met and we started wrestling there. And we decided when we get out and get back to the States that we were going to tag up and, be, and try to get the championship, and that's exactly what we did. Yes, now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sergeant Goulet was the European heavyweight champion when he was in France, and uh, uh, it's some mystery attached to it. He left France, gave up his title, joined the Foreign Legion, went to Corsica, where the headquarters are. I and might then... add also that we did have tough training. Like, he was my uh, drill instructor, and he taught me the tough ways. You know, I used to... I used to get put down in the sweat boxes quite a bit because I didn't like to take orders and I disobeyed quite a bit until I learned from the sergeant here. I used to stay in the sweat box. I think I'm the only man that got a medal for KP, really. He's right, and I'm the one a couple of times put him on a sweat box just to see him how he can sweat, how tough he was. And I decide after I saw him sweat and I decide to got him as my partner. I train him and I know he had some wrestling background because he told me a few times. And that's why we are now what we are, the world we champion. are the champion. Can I just and ask a question? Now, uh, the sergeant pointed out that the enlistment is for five years in the Legion, and that's you were right. only in for two and a half well, years. Well, wait, 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 how I got out is no concern. How I got out is my business. I got out, and that's the main thing. And we're here, and we're the champions, and we're going to remain the champions. Because we're the Legionnaires, right, and sergeant? Don't ever don't go around and don't say some word about, about why... Well, fans, uh, we're ready to go, and here to introduce the contestants, Tom Mathis. Our referee for this match is the Dean of Wrestling Referees, Connie Barker. Introducing from Downers Grove, Illinois, weighing 230 pounds, Angelo Papo. And his opponent from Woodland Hills, California, at 252 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, the world's most scientific wrestler, Wilbur Snyder. Well, here we have two of the top wrestlers in America, Wilbur Snyder and Angelo Papo. The referee, one of the best, Connie Marker, a man who is very proud of his Greek heritage. He's known as the Golden Greek. Checking over some of the rules with the wrestlers, and uh, evidently there's some misunderstanding there because this little... Oh, wait a minute. Papo took a sort of a half swing at Snyder. And we thought the action might start before the bell. Anyway, we're now ready to go, and there's the bell. Boy, that cowboy Bob Ellis really did a terrific job on Lanza, Mulligan, and Heenan in the previous match. Go behind by Wilbur Snyder. Double wrist lock and a good takedown, but both men quickly to their feet. Papo, a very dangerous wrestler. Takes a side headlock, now a hammerlock. He's moving very fast. Now Wilbur swings around out of it, reverses it. Has a hammerlock on Papo. <laughs> now again, Wilbur with the hammerlock. Now, Wilbur caught him coming off the ropes, takes the hammerlock. In that uh, previous match, it's just very, very fortunate that Bob Ellis, with his quick reflexes, ducked when Bobby Heenan tried to hit him with the crutch because he certainly would have damaged Bob Ellis. But Ellis, whoa, what a comeback. He's a real nice, easygoing guy, but when he gets mad, fans, watch out. 
Again, Wilbur was brought down with a leg trip, but now he's on his feet. Referees hold. Back against the ropes, a punch by Popo, a quick comeback by Snyder. Again against the rope. Watch this, the slap. Uh-oh. Boy, that really made Wilbur angry. Wilbur Snyder is after Popo, but Popo very quickly eluded him. Step back. Against the ropes now. And Wilbur. With a powerful slap. Shook up Popo. There's Popo on the outside. Wilbur brings him in with an arm drag. Now he locks that arm. Takes an arm bar hold. Angelo Popo. Is in trouble now as Wilbur works on that wrist and arm. A punch to the... Hey, Popo picks him up, a big body slam. He covers Wilbur. A two count, Wilbur gets away. What a slam! Boy, that Wilbur picked him up and threw him. About halfway across the ring. Popo back against the rope. Getting up. Holding his back. Wilbur Snyder takes an overhand wrist lock on Angelo. Popo caught in the overhand wrist lock. There's a... Uh, well, he's just about to pull, the, pull Wilbur down by the trunk. Wilbur continuing the pressure. Now it trips him and he brings him to the mat. There he is with the armbar hold. A smash to the midsection. Breaks the hold up. And now Popo punches Wilbur. Continuously. Staggers him against the rope. Throws him into the rope. Oh boy. Wilbur Snyder came off the rope with a tremendous smash to the face. Uh, Popo sent him to the mat. Popo getting up slowly. Wilbur takes over. Side headlock over the hip to the mat. Oh, that Connie Marker really jumped over both of those men. He's very, very agile. Now there, there's Popo caught in this headlock, but he brought Wilbur over, attempted to pin him. He's a tough competitor. He does it again, but he pulls the trunks in doing so. He pulls the trunks of Snyder. There's a side headlock. And he crashes into the mat. Beautiful Camelot. One of the matches uh, we'll be seeing today, uh, if time permits, the Baron, Baron Von Roschke, will be in there against the Polish Giant. Rosano, big man, over seven feet tall, over 420 pounds in weight. We're really looking forward to that match. Snyder on the mat, but his leg on over the rope, and it, it's a break. But on the break, uh, Popo keeps punishing Snyder with kicks. Now he's got him by the arm, and he sends him flying into the turnbuckle. He sends him across to the other turnbuckles. Keeps smashing away. An Angelo Popo now with a big flying mare. Now a reverse chin lock on Wilbur Snyder. Very tough Wilbur Snyder caught in this hole. Popo punishes him. 
This is a very powerfully applied hold. This reverse chin lock. And this could weaken Snyder down. There's Papo. He released the hold. It was a strangle momentarily. Now a choke hold. The referee counts to make him break it up. Again, he goes for the reverse chin lock. And again, I believe it's a choke hold. Oh, the referee checking it. It is not. This hold, the reverse chin lock, is not necessarily a winning hold, but it weakens a man very much. And Wilbur Snyder, who's in terrific condition, is fighting very hard. Papo puts more and more relentless pressure on the hold. And there's Wilbur getting up to his feet. Fighting against the... Oh, he's on his feet. He throws Papo into the rope. Ducks Papo over him. He jumps over Papo. Oh, a beautiful flying head scissors. What a terrific move by Wilbur Snyder. Papo goes for the rope, but the referee breaks that up. Papo persistently puts his feet on those ropes, and the referee must break it up. What a terrific match this is, fans, with these two top-notch wrestlers. Angelo Papo and Wilbur Snyder. And now Papo back in the corner. And he's walking around, trying to keep away from Wilbur. Hoping that Wilbur will rush him, but Wilbur won't. He's too smart for that. Oh, man, a real good smack to the face by Wilbur. He slams Wilbur into the turnbuckle. And does so again. Now he's punishing Snyder. A kick right to the face. That staggers Wilbur Snyder. There's a flying field. Wow, what a drop kick right to the face. He picks him up and a big body slam. And Wilbur Snyder with an A drop. But Papo under the ropes. Angelo Papo, when he's in trouble, gets close to those ropes. Always looking for an automatic break. Papo tried a leg dive, but Wilbur too fast for him. Now Wilbur with a half Nelson. Nope, now he brings him over the other way. Trying to press his shoulders to the mat. Papo fighting against it. Wilbur has both arms tied. Oh no, Papo's got one arm away. And he tried a front headlock, but Wilbur spins him around and takes a hammerlock. It's a tremendous match. These two tough wrestlers in here. Oh, a punch by Papo. Another punch. He keeps punching Wilbur. He charges into Wilbur, but Wilbur kicks him and now punches him. A smash to the side of the head. He goes into those ropes, comes off with a flying tackle. A big backdrop. Now Papo tackles Snyder to the mat. And there's Wilbur. He spins around and takes the abdominal stretch. What a pop here. It's all over. Papo gives up. The winner of the match is the great Wilbur Snyder. Fans, a beautiful victory by Wilbur Snyder. We'll be back in a moment, so please stand by. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with handsome Johnny Starr, the man who accompanies Ox Baker. The champion all over, takes care of his business. And, of course, uh, uh, handsome Johnny Starr wanted to be here today because of what occurred last week at the wrestling matches when Ox Baker was wrestling Cowboy Bob Ellis and uh, Bold Eagle got in there. He threw a big tin wastebasket in there, attacked the Ox. And, uh, you know, after all, you shouldn't object to that because it was a Texas death match. Anything goes. 
Just a second. Not anything goes, Sam. I was there as Ox was second. Now, Ox can't be here today. He's in California, so I came to speak for him. I was there as the Ox was second. Bold Eagle was there to interfere in the match and nothing else. I don't know what he was doing there. He's a wild Indian. He's now, a maniac. Just a moment. Now, just now, a moment. You were there seconding the Ox, right? I was there. And, and Ellis wanted Eagle to second him, which I think was That's all right. That's not the way it happened, Sam. Bold Eagle knew he and Ellis had decided before this match ever started that they were going to have a little conspiracy out there to injure the ox. Well, nobody can injure the ox. Ox is the, the meanest, most sadistic man in the world. He can hurt anybody. Bold Eagle is a fool for even trying anything like this. But the point is, he jumped into the uh, ring. He interfered with the match. He tried to injure me. I was an innocent bystander just watching the match. That's all I and ever because do. Because of this, you, you've issued a challenge. This is exactly it. right. The ox sent me here to issue a challenge to this lunatic, Bold Eagle, and uh, also to Cowboy Bob Ellis or anybody that Bold Eagle wants to get. In other here. the Ox and you as a team will That's take right. on Bold Eagle and any partner he gets. That's right, because I want to tell you something, Sam. The Ox is in the process of making me the, the meanest wrestler in the world, uh, up on the same level with him, the most sadistic. And, and I'm not far from there well, right thank now. you. We'll hear more about that challenge a little later. And now let's get back to wrestling following these messages. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee for this match, Henry Van Loon. A one-fall event for the 15-minute time limit, introducing from San Francisco, California, at 238 pounds, Kenny Dillinger. And he is accompanied by his manager and intellectual advisor, Mark Manson. Dillinger's opponent for this match from South Bend, Indiana, at 229 pounds, the former Mr. Indiana, Tom Lynch. <laughs> Referee Henry Van Loon checks Lynch. Mark Madsen says that he'll check Dillinger. And uh, the referee, of course, must check him. Tom Lynch has a tremendous physique. Top-notch weightlifter as well as a great wrestler. There's the bell and we're underway. And Kenny Dillinger, who is very tricky, very dirty. Boy, look at that Lynch take him down. Now he brings him over with an arm drag. And Dillinger goes to the outside. Gets over there with uh, Mark Manson. They look through that book. The book of uh, wrestling holds and pictures. And uh, that's how Manson instructs Dillinger. They're in the referee's hold. Back against the ropes. Referee says break it up. And uh, it was a clean break only because Lynch was ready to throw a punch at Dillinger. Side headlock by Tom Lynch. He punishes Dillinger with the side headlock. Brings him over to the mat. Hangs on to that side headlock. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching All-Star Championship Wrestling, featuring the world's greatest wrestlers. We're with you every week at the same time with the top stars, top wrestling stars in the nation. Manson uh, started in the ring, the referee sending him outside. No reason for Manson to be in there. And meanwhile, as the referee went over to Manson, Dillinger pulled Lynch's hair and brought him to the mat. There's Dillinger choking Manson. A correction, Dillinger choking Lynch. Lynch is in the corner. 
And Dillinger has removed some object from his trunks and he it's a it's a chain. He wrapped it around Lynch's throat and choked him with it. Now he conceals it again. Takes over on Lynch. Again, he has that chain. He conceals it from the referee. He's choking Tom Lynch with it. You can see it now in his hand, I believe. He conceals it in his trunks again. Boy, he's a wild man, this uh, Ken Dillinger. There he's reaching for that chain. Wraps it around the throat of Tom Lynch. Keeps his back to the referee. So the referee can't see it. The referee makes him break it up. Henry Van Loon is searching Dillinger, but I believe, I'm not sure, I think Dillinger passed that chain over to uh, Mark Manson on the outside. He has hurt Lynch. There's a reverse chin lock. He's got that chain again, took it from Manson. Chokes Tom Lynch with it. Argues with the referee while he continues choking Lynch. He's got that chain wrapped around his hand. He goes for Lynch again and smashes him in the face. With that chain almost as effective as brass knuckles. He's completely overwhelmed Tom Lynch, who's a fine young wrestler, but Lynch has been unable to get going because of the dirty tactics of Dillinger. He continues choking him and choking him with the chain. Dylan just smashes Lynch into the turnbuckle. He goes after him with kicks and forearm smashes. Tom Lynch making a comeback. Dillinger takes over again, but now it's Lynch with a headlock and punches to the head. He drops Dillinger to the back. Lynch has Dillinger against the rope using a chokehold. And who can blame him? Now a flying field across the ring. Manson and uh, Dillinger having a council of war. Dillinger, uh, wait a minute, Dillinger takes over again with a side headlock. Punches Lynch. Lynch comes back with a forearm smash. Now, he started to take a step over to hold, but Dillinger kicked him and sent him to the mat. He drops. Wait a minute. He had Dillinger and... He was struck with the book by Manson. He goes after Manson. Dillinger floored him. Pins him and it's all over the winner. It's Ken Dillinger. Now we certainly don't condone the actions of Dillinger and Manson, but they do work well as a team. Although all their maneuvers are Dirty maneuvers. They certainly should not be used. Lynch is still on the mat. And there's Dillinger raising his hand. And here, Manson attacks Lynch again. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, the referee is attempting. Wait a minute, there he goes. He goes after Lynch. That's why we try to restore some order here. Let's pause. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be talking with another guest in just a moment. I do want to remind you, we're with you every week at the same time on television here on Channel 3. And, of course, when we do have wrestling in Champaign or in uh, Danville, Illinois, we'll keep you informed. So just keep watching our show every week. And as the next cards come up, we'll tell you where they are, where to get tickets, and so on. There was a lot of excitement last week uh, when uh, uh, the Ox and... Uh, Bold Eagle were in that Texas death match. Uh, correction, that was the Ox against Ellis, but Eagle got in there, and I mean it was wild, and a little while ago you heard handsome Johnny Starr speaking for Ox Baker and himself, and they have issued a challenge to Bold Eagle and any partner he gets. And we're going we're gonna to find out from Bold Eagle if he's uh, ready for that and if he has a partner or if he's thinking of a partner. And here he is, Chief Bold Eagle. Bold Eagle. Sam, it's a pleasure getting here. I, I don't know. Uh, when, back, when you were back in the dressing room, did you by any chance listen on the monitor and see it, what the uh, star said? He issued a challenge. Right. He and Oxbaker have challenged you and any partner you want. Well, he challenged me. That's all right with me because I have a couple of little partners. I have one in particular in mind, but I'm not going to tell you right now. I just want them to come brag and tell how tough they are because after they get to the top of the mountain, how tough they are, we're going to break them down, get them all the way down to the bottom, and kick them from post to post. So just beware. It's a warning. I have a partner, and I will accept your challenge. Well, we'll be waiting to hear who your partner is, and uh, we'll be waiting to hear uh, more from the Ox and Handsome Johnny Star. You know, they issued a challenge. But maybe when it comes down to signing the contract, they may not do so. But anyway, we know that you're anxious to get at them, and I'm sure you'll have a great partner, and thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, fans, back to wrestling following these messages. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's Wilbur Snyder. No, but wait a minute. I understand. I've seen what's happened here tonight, and I think that these supposedly... Uh, wrestlers, uh, the world's have these champions and this and that. Uh, I have heard what they have said about the commission, and I think that they're trying to take di disadvantage of a man who cannot speak English from a foreign country, and I am here to see that nothing happens to him in this match. Now, I'm going to be right at this ringside, so I, I know that it's a one fall, but there's nothing going to happen to this man in this match, as long as I'm here at the ringside. He shouldn't be here. Ladies and gentlemen, Wilbur Snyder volunteered to be in the Giants' corner because Baron Barofsky has a manager in his corner and the Baron got some brass knuckles. They're on his hand right now and he punched Wilbur Snyder. Wilbur is bleeding. We'll have to get our ambulance atten attendant to help him out. Wilbur, Wilbur Snyder is bleeding. Get him over to a chair, please. Wilbur Snyder is... The blood is just pouring out of Snyder's head. And he will be attended to. The match has officially started. And the giant rushes in, and he gives a big flying bill, and a punch to Baron Von Roschke. He picks him up. 
Whoa, what a big body slam. The fans going wild. I can't, Wilbur is back. The blood is just pouring out of his head. And the ambulance attendant is working on him. And now, oh, a tremendous headbutt by Andre Rosanoff. Snyder is on the other side. He's on a chair. Here's Rosanoff. There's Wilbur, he's being attended to there. Rosanoff just crashed the Baron into the corner and Rosanoff way ahead of the Baron. What a powerful man. When Wilbur came down to the ring, there was a discussion about this match because it was supposed to be a two out of three four match and it turns out that it's just a one four match the giant wanted a two out of three but evidently he got his way it's a one four match and Wilbur volunteered to be in the giant's corner but unfortunately he was attacked by the Baron. Got a bad cut on his head. A back break across the leg. He's got him covered. A two count and the Baron gets away. Boy, look at this giant. Standing on the barn. The giant just about tears the ears off of the barn with that twisting ankle head scissors he had. Watch this now. Oh, a tremendous punch to the Baron's head. And he falls back almost out of the ring. The man's out screaming. There's a smash to the head. Now this Andre Rosanoff, the Polish giant, is a tremendous wrestler. He's doing a terrific job in there. He's working that Baron over very well. Snyder on the outside, being attended to by the ambulance attendant. His head is bandaged up. And pretty boy Bobby Heenan is on the, on the opposite side. He is really worried about his man, the Baron, who is now bleeding from the nose as Rosanoff continues pummeling him and punching him. Now he has him in a standing head scissors. He drops the Baron to the mat. A body drop with all his weight across the thigh of Baron Van Rossen. A fan going wild here as he does it again. Look at him go to town. He pulls him up by the ears. A tremendous smash. Hey! Pretty boy Bobby Heenan pulls the giant's leg. And that got the giant off his feet and gave the Baron a chance to work on him as he's doing now. Works on his eyes. And for the first time in the match, the giant in trouble due to the intervention by Bobby Heenan pulled his leg he brings him over the giant brings him over the 
Byron drops him. Now the Byron is biting him. See, here comes Boba Snyder. He got into the ring. He's all bandaged up, but he got in there. Oh, fast. Look at this, Boba Snyder. He sends the Byron into the rope. That takes. He had him in a abdominal stretch. But Hina got in there. The Giant is in trouble because he, he was gouged in the eyes or something was put in his eyes. And here, Wilma Snyder again takes the abdominal stretch. The Giant has been blinded. He can't do much at the moment. Bobby Hina got in there. This match is just getting out of hand. Wilma Snyder, the referee can't get him to leave. We are running out of TV time. Look at this, Snyder. He's right after him. He sends him into the ropes. He takes the abdominal stretch. And Hina gets in there again. I don't know what he put in the giant's eyes. He can't move the giant. His eye, he was, he must have put some pepper or something in there. As Wilbur, he slams him. Oh, that Wilbur is really going to town. Snyder sends him into the rope. He takes the abdominal stretch again. He puts the abdominal... Now the giant goes after him. 